There is a reason why your marketing campaigns do not work. You are more focused on the idea of running a campaign than running a winning campaign. As long as you focus on staying busy and don't focus on the outcome, you will always be disappointed with your marketing. Running a winning campaign is a lot of work. It's hard, it's challenging, you're always learning. You have days where you feel like you are the king or queen because you're crushing it on the number side and then there are periods and long spells where nothing seems to be working and you don't know why. And that is an uncomfortable place to be. And so most people run to their comfort zone. Most people will set up a campaign with proxy indicators, things that make them feel good that in fact don't actually help their business. And this is what destroys the art of marketing. Whether you are running your own business, or you work at an agency, or you are a marketer, or in sales, doing things that make you feel good, but don't actually help you achieve your goal, is the number one thing that holds people back. And we all do it. And so, this is a really hard thing to face. Because one, if you're too hard on yourself, you will never be optimistic, you'll never be hopeful, you will never make the investment. But on the other side, you run the risk of building crazy amounts of resentment towards your agency or your marketing team or you know feeling bad about yourself because you're going to be super hopeful and super optimistic and you're going to spend all of these dollars and all the data is going to come in and say look look how many people are visiting our site uh, but they're not converting oh look how many people are buying but they only buy once at a discount and don't buy a second or third or fourth time oh look at all the people who are signing up for my new SaaS solution but after the free trial they drop out right like we're going to feel good about all these proxy things that are happening and then a year's going to go by and you're going to look and you're going to say i've spent all of this money i've done all of this work i've put my heart into this and my business isn't growing what is happening Marketing must not work. My sales team must be bad. I must be making bad decisions. And you're not gonna know what's wrong because you were foolishly optimistic and you didn't look at the numbers along the way. So what do you do? It's really very simple. No matter the tactic, no matter how big or how small what it is you're looking to do, you need to work through a few key steps. First of all, you have to have a really clear idea of what you want to accomplish. Every brief, pretty much, that I've ever read never goes deep enough to actually say what it is they want to accomplish. So what do you want to accomplish? Do you want 10 new leads? That's a clear idea. Do you want to increase your email newsletter list and hit 10,000 subscribers? Really have a clear and concrete and smart goal set for what it is you want to accomplish for your business. And then the next level down from that is your campaign objectives. Your campaign objectives is one part of how you might be able to go and do this. But you may find that the campaign will start something and then your sales team or you need to follow up with other things or your retail environments need to sell or all these things need to happen outside of that. And so your campaign objectives, what is realistic for your campaign to actually achieve? We work with a lot of companies on company culture and recruitment to try and help them save money from crazy amounts of turnover. And so when people come to us and they say, you know what, it's costing too much time and too much money to go through all of these resumes that people are submitting, we want people to pre-qualify themselves before they submit an application for this job or this role. I just don't wanna look at 3,000 people when only 200 of them are good. So please make a campaign to get rid of 2,800 people, only allow us to see the 200 people who are good. Well, that's like a really kind of crazy goal. Like, is it realistic for a campaign to get more people to want to apply? Yes. Is it realistic to have more people self-qualify if we're really aware of what makes a candidate a great candidate? Yes. But is it realistic to say, we're gonna weed out 2,800 people and we're only gonna show you the people who are exact? No, it's setting us up for failure. It's unrealistic to assume that we would be able to get down to that finite number. It's a great goal if that's our intention and that's the direction we're moving and that's what we're hoping to do. So our corporate objective is finite, like we want to achieve this. Our campaign objective, it's not about what we want to achieve, it's what's realistic to achieve. And so when you're planning your campaign, be crystal clear, be self-aware, be really honest with these different levels of what you want to achieve and what is actually possible. Second, you cannot know enough about your target audience. People are too vague with who they're going after. And so you need to focus on your primary audience, those who you're speaking to, those who you're targeting and have a clear idea of who they are, not only demographically, so whether they're male or female or their age group or their geography or their uh, household income, but also psychographically. What are the things that they care about? 
What do they fear? What do they love? What are their hopes? What are their dreams? You need to have a deep and rich understanding of everything that drives the people that you're going after. So that way you can tap into their emotional center. So that way you can use stories or social proof to really tap in to what it is that they are looking for. Because you have a clear goal and now you need to connect that to the audience. You need to understand who are these people? What do they want to accomplish? You cannot trick your way into engagement. You cannot try and surprise people and suddenly they're gonna be like, oh, I didn't even know that I needed this. This is amazing. You need to really tap into who the people are, what pushes them, what drives them, what motivates them, and help ensure that you connect your brand and your offering with those people. Third, you need to respect the platform. If you are doing an email marketing campaign, it's gonna be a very different objective than someone who's a cold uh, outreach or a list building campaign on Facebook. If someone knows you, it's different than if they don't. If they're searching for you, it's different than if you're interrupting them. And the type of ad or the type of action that you want them to take is totally different depending on what you're doing and where it is. Once you understand your target audience, it'll help you determine what platform you need to be on because that's where those people are. But then once you're in that environment or on that platform, you need to respect the fact that everyone is different. Let's say that I'm an insurance broker and I wanna work with doctors, high net worth individuals. If that doctor is online searching for a new insurance broker, it's a totally different mindset. And if I wanted to run a campaign across all of California where I was only targeting doctors and I was doing so through Instagram stories, getting my awareness up and more and more and more people are learning about me, that initial message in Instagram stories would be totally different than the person who's searching for me. And so you have to have a clear idea of an outcome and you have to have a clear idea of who you're speaking to and you have to respect that every environment and every style of ad that you're doing needs to be tweaked so that way you're saying the right thing to the right person at the right time. This is the only way to approach a campaign so that way later you know what is working and isn't working. And this takes us to number four, the importance of segmentations and lists. Whether you're doing an email campaign, the easiest thing to do is just to bucket everyone into a newsletter, right? I just send out a monthly newsletter, yippee do. But those who never open your newsletter versus those who do are different people. Wouldn't it be valuable to know who these people are? Of that person who always gets your email and always opens it and always comes to the page, let's say after three, four, five, six months, wouldn't you wanna pull that group of people out and phone them? or send them a special message, those people are much more engaged in your brand. Of course you would. They are willing to open things all the time and then willing to come to your site all the time and they read all of your stuff. So you would totally wanna pull that little segmentation, that little group out and give them a different message, give them a different offer, do something to try and engage them more. This concept is the same when you're running an advertising campaign. In Instagram, in Facebook, in LinkedIn, in Google, the greatest thing you can do is show people ads and then have them take an action and then from that, take that group and then remarket to them a different offer or a different action. And then of the people who do that, take that group and remarket to them a different offer and a different action. And of the people who purchase, take that group and remarket to them a different offer and a different action, but also segment out the people who didn't and try to save them and try to understand why they didn't or the people who go through your e-commerce site and get halfway through the cart, but then abandon. Let's email those people. Let's pull those people out. Let's try and have an idea of why they don't. But the people who abandon in the cart, and then you email to, and then one third of those come back to the cart, but still don't purchase. Should we start a remarketing campaign for the next 200 days, 180 days, to try and remind them of who we are? This is what marketing is about today. Now that sounds ridiculously overwhelming. It sounds really, really complicated. And you don't have to start here. But to make your marketing campaign work for you and drive crazy amounts of value at the end, whether that's sales, revenue, leads, whatever you consider your end goal is, you need to start getting more advanced because simply throwing up a campaign will get you some results, but chances are you're gonna be wasting money. The only way to know what's working and not working and whether you should keep doing it or stop doing it and whether you should try something new or completely blow up the entire thing and start from scratch is within the segmentation to track everything. And that's the last step. Track as many things as you can. You get a lot of phone calls, 
Well, there's call tracking. It ghosts phone numbers, and so for any campaign you do, any billboard you do, anything offline or online, you can put ghosted phone numbers up, and then that phone number will be reserved for that activity, and when people call, not only do you know how many calls are coming in specifically from that activity, you can record those calls, then you can take those recordings, and you can give it to a third-party software like Gong.io, and then they can analyze all of the bulk data and tell you which one of your salespeople are doing well or not doing well, and at what points you drop off, and all of this stuff. There's so much business intelligence out there. There's so much data, there's so much insight, but it comes from setting yourself up, no matter how small the campaign is, whether you're spending you know, $20 a day, setting up the architecture of your campaign, setting up the planning, so that way you know in six months or a year or two years, what's happening? If you don't have a way to measure what is working and what isn't working and what's happening and if you should go or not, then you are gonna have headaches in six months, nine months, and a year, and then that resentment is gonna build because literally you don't know if it's working or not. And that is no way to run a campaign. So you wanna impress yourself, you wanna be happy with your marketing campaigns, you wanna feel good about that spend, understand your objectives, understand the audience, respect the platform, and then segment the heck out of it. And then while you're at it, make sure you think big, you be bold, and you say yes. Setting clear goals and Man, when I was walking back from the bathroom, I had the best opening. If growing and scaling your business by being better at sales and better at marketing, better at customer experience is important to you, be sure to check out this video right over here. And like always, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon, and get each video every day when it drops.